Hey there, how's it going? In an effort to get better at game design, I like to go back and look at projects I've done in the past and do some sort of critique to kind of really see where I was, where I've come, and if I've gotten better. And I do this actually for the community as well. Every Friday on my Twitch stream, we have a playtesting day where people submit their games. I playtest them. We give feedback based from me, from the community, kind of looking at the user experience, what it's like to go through the game, what's working, what's not, and try to help everybody get better as designers together. And one thing that I haven't done in a little while is look at one of my own games. I've done a couple of critiquing my own game videos in the past. People have told me they actually enjoy them and asked if I was going to do any more. So here we are to take a look at another game that I made a long time ago. This game was voted on by my patrons. I gave them a list of games that I had made in the past to see which one they wanted to see. This is actually a game I have not made a video on. This was done before I started making devlogs and all of that. This game was made all the way back in March of 2019. Ah, the days before the world went crazy. Those were good times. But this was a game that I made for the 8 Bits to Infinity Platformer Week Jam. This was actually the first game jam I did with 8 Bits to Infinity. That is the group that I run my own game jam with every September for Vim Jam. But this was the first time I did a jam with them. I ended up doing a lot more after that. And I believe this was something along the lines of my second or third game jam ever. I think I had done two, one or two game jams before. I honestly can't remember the order. It's been a while, so I'm not even going to pretend like I know, but we'll say it's somewhere in there. The theme for this jam was darkness, and I think I got that theme knocked down pretty well. But let's take a look at what the description is for the game that I put in here. Keep the altars lit while avoiding nasty creatures from the dark. Some want to destroy the light, the others want to destroy you. How long can you keep the flame burning? Standard WASDA controls, we have a double jump and we can press down to drop through platforms. Okay, that's not bad. So in terms of mechanics, I think overall it's a pretty standard platformer. And let's see what the game plays like. It's been a while. Okay, so we're in the game and first off, I actually think I did a pretty good job on the title screen. This might be one of the best title screens I've done for any game jam game. It's got nice ambiance to it. It's got a good feel. The particles are kind of going up. You've got the flame going. And I think overall that actually works out really well. So the way this game works is we are trying to keep five of these altars lit. We'll get into some of the issues that go in with that in a second. But first, let's take a look. We've got info. So we've got controls, how to play. The altar fires are dying. Keep them alive by passing by them. As you walk past them, they will light up. Ghosts can be defeated by jumping on them. Okay, so we got Mario style controls. If you lose all your health or all five altars break, it's game over. Okay, so that's the way to get, that's our end state. And then spike balls cannot be jumped on. That's in hard mode only. So this is back when I was still adding hard modes to a lot of games because I thought they were too easy. Nowadays, I generally don't bother with that. However, I do say that if you're ever making a game jam, don't make an easy mode and a normal mode or an easy and a hard mode. Make a normal mode and a hard mode because that way it doesn't, demean the player if they have to play on easy mode, right? Easy mode tends to be looked at as a negative thing. It shouldn't be, but it is. So a lot of people will try to play the normal mode or not easy mode because they need to feel like gamers and then they end up not liking your game. So it's something to keep in mind. I always like to make a normal mode and a hard mode if I'm doing that. That way I make the mode that I enjoy or the mode that I think is good as the hard mode. And then you make the easier version called normal. And that's for anyone else coming in that may not have the experience that you have. I actually learned that trick from Edmund McMullen. It's not so much that I learned it, but in The Binding of Isaac, according to Edmund McMullen, hard mode is the intended way that he had to play it. And the normal and easy modes were added to help bring in more players and get people into the game before they get crushed by the difficulty. So we're going to start on normal and let's jump in and see how the play works. So the way this game works is we have a platform character that needs to run around this little knight dude. We've got to jump over and up, run around. Hopefully this is not too loud. Ow. But we need to collect these or keep these altars lit. They have little markers on the front of them, which are not the most visible things, but they are. It's visible enough. It could be more. But you'll see this will tick down, and when we move over it, it puts it back up to five. So no matter how far down it is, every time you move over it, it goes back up to five. Enemies will try to go into them and put out the fire. Whenever an enemy runs into the fire, it deals one damage to it. Ow. Or one damage to your face as well when you run into them like that. 
So we need to move around and keep these going. The larger mouthed enemies, so the smaller enemies, go towards the altar. The larger mouthed enemies come after you specifically, so they'll they'll trail and chase you. And as you keep them lit, basically, I believe the way I have it set up is every... If the altar is below three, it spawns more enemies, but it's not significantly more enemies. And that's one thing we'll talk about in just a second. But that's how it's... The original idea was the difficulty was supposed to ramp up, and the idea would be that you couldn't play for too long. Because one thing I definitely have learned since this, and I start... Actually, one of the things I learned was from this game, was that having a timer on a game where it goes endlessly, right? You can just... It's as long as... As good as you are, you can keep the timer going, right? So it's just... It's an attrition battle. And I learned from this game jam specifically, and I've kept this moving forward, I don't really do timer-based games where the timer counts up anymore. Now I generally only do timer-based games where the timer goes down, because that means that there's an actual end to the level, as opposed to just surviving as long as you can. So ultimately here, I'm running back and forth, and this is where the timer, I think, becomes a problem where you're trying to keep it alive as long as possible and play for as long as possible. I'm, it's getting repetitive. Like I will say already, I'm two minutes and 15 seconds in, and this is getting very repetitive. It's not, the challenge isn't high enough that I need to, or that I'm gonna die relatively quickly. And that's one thing I found in an arcade style game when you go for like an arc this is an arcade game. When you go for an arcade style game, especially one that has a timer on it, you want the player to not be able to last forever because here's the thing, right? Once I die here, say I die after five minutes, say I die after six minutes, the next time if I want to play again, I don't have a lot of incentive to play again to try to beat my high score because then I have to like run around for another five, six minutes, right? And this gameplay, while it's fun, is not the most exciting now that I've been doing it for a couple of minutes. It's kind of getting boring and old, right? So this is a little bit meh, in my opinion. I definitely think I could have done better. Right now, this... It works, but it gets old. I think that... I think over time, the sconces do start to peter out a little faster. Oh, that one finally died. They do start to peter out a little bit faster, but again, it's not super engaging because the gameplay is not really changing that much. So now, and then it, the game also gets easier when you only have a couple of torches left or a couple of altars left. So now I just kind of balance my time between these two and we can just keep going. The other problem is is I found an exploit kind of after I made the Game Jam game, where realistically, I can just stand here. I can let all the other altars go out and just hang out here. Like, especially when I'm down to one altar, there's... Now I have no reason to run around. So as the altars go down, the other thing is I'm not incentivizing the player to move anymore. There's zero reason for me to go, like, all of these other altars are broken. So now there is zero reason for me to move around this level which turns this platformer game into a stand here and jump on enemies type game, which, I mean, I'm not saying that that's a bad design for a game. That could be fun, but this is dull. Like, the gameplay has now turned from running around to standing here waiting, which isn't that exciting. It's not that fun, and it's not that engaging, which means if you're down to your last altar, and you're doing this, and you're just waiting... By the time you die, you're not going to want to start over and do it again. I died there mostly on purpose. Um, I'm gonna, That's what I'm going to say. But, right, I, I just, it got boring. Like, I kind of, you start to lose focus and you tend to die because of boredom. Uh, the same thing, like, I could literally start the level. Uh, I'm not going to make you sit through all this, but I can literally sit here now and we can just wait. And let's see how long this goes with this strategy where I never run around at all. Uh, I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to sit here with me the whole time. All right, so we're over five minutes, and you can kind of see the problem. I've, I've beaten my old time, but I've done nothing fun. I'm bored. Like, I was kind of looking around. I've taken one damage because I stopped paying attention. Uh, 
the cat was doing other things. I was more distracted by that. So when we're making a platformer game and you can do this, not the best call. I, I really feel like this is something I should have thought about. It's not so much that I should have thought about it. I was still new to game development. I didn't fully understand what players would do, how players would play. And there is a quote by Soren Johnson, who I believe was the lead designer on Civilization 3 or 4. I think it might have been 4. Uh, if I got that wrong, I apologize. One of his my favorite quotes from Soren Johnson is, Players will optimize the fun out of your game if you give them the chance. So if you allow a degenerate strategy that makes the game less fun, players will always choose that because it's the optimal strategy. That's just kind of what happens with your players most of the time. Hey, I finally died. I had to go to the bathroom and I was just... For a while there, nothing was happening, even if I didn't move. I mistakenly made the enemies that attack you specifically come in from the side where they were just under you and you would just jump on them automatically. So, oof, that was a, that's not how you want to make a platformer. I was able to barely move that entire game and look at the time I got. Now, if I want to beat that time, I got to go sit there for another 10 minutes. That's not fun. That's really boring. So that's definitely one of the things I think that I, the biggest mistakes that I made here was it's, there's no incentive or encouragement to the player to actually try to play the game the way I had intended. Because look at the time, you get a much better score if you just don't do anything. And that's not the way you want to do this kind of stuff. Now, hard mode is a little different. I did find out about this strategy really late in development and thought, ooh, I should probably try to fix that. So hard mode ends up having a couple of has these spike balls, which you cannot destroy. And they move on each of the planes. So there's three levels for each of the alt or for the altars, and they move across them. So you can't just stand here and let the other ones die out and not have anything happen. But all you need to do is jump every couple of seconds, and we're back in the same boat, right? We're doing the same thing now of I can just sit here and avoid this thing. So as long as I do that. As long as I just pay attention and jump when it comes in, we have the same problem that we had before. So I do want to, let's go ahead and die real fast. I want to try hard mode as intended and see if it's actually a little bit more fun. Because again, it's been a while since I've played this. So let's try and actually do as well as we can by running around. Again, I, I like the idea of the game. I just don't think it's executed as well as it could have been. I do feel that these, the level layout gets a little dull too because it's just moving back and forth over and over again and that's really all you're doing. And the biggest thing I think is my problem with this game is it's just a bit repetitive. You're just making figure eights back and forth across the level. Nothing changes. Nothing really gets you know more interesting or much more difficult than it's, it is at the start. I do have it set up when these are below three. I may have said it before. When these are below three, it does spawn enemies a little bit quicker, but not that much quicker, to be honest. And it gets, yeah, it gets old. It gets old kind of fast. So it's a neat idea, but overall, I'm not super jazzed by it. And I definitely feel like I could do more now if I was to remake this game and or go for this kind of like type of game again, I would definitely change it up. Especially because this is for the platformer jam. So this is about making a platformer game. And ultimately the fun of this game, or not even the fun, the way to do well at this game is to not rely very heavily on platforming. There's a lot of just kind of moving back and forth. You move back and forth or ideally really to do the best score, as you see up here, you just sit in one place. I legit got up and left a couple of times and, you know, to chase the cat around or do something else and still was alive for nine minutes. So it's it's an interesting idea for a game. I definitely think that I could have done more. If I was to go back now, the way I think I would actually do this is, this is the game, sorry, jump it all over the place. This is the game that, stop me from doing timers. 
like this, where they count up. Now I only do timers that count down and they're typically 30 seconds or less because to keep people's attention, keep them wanting more, if it's like 30 seconds, like, oh man, I could have done better. The, the, oh, one more game feel definitely comes in more if you're not waiting nine minutes. Like there's no, I fin if I finish this one, there is no way I'm like, oh, one more game. I can beat that time. I can get nine minutes and 26 seconds. Why would I care? Why would anybody care? Whereas if it's a countdown timer and it ends and you didn't get the, t the score you wanted, then there's a good incentive to try again because it's only 30 seconds, right? It's not that long. It doesn't take too much time. It doesn't make you just slog through an attrition of trying to get back to where you were. So if I was to redo this now, the way I think I would actually change it is to make it level based. And it would be a timer and you would get your score based on how many altars you kept lit throughout the timer. So say it's 30 seconds, right? You got enemies coming in from all directions. You need to run around and keep the tort, keep all of the altars lit. At the end of the 30 seconds, you get a score at the bottom of your little window that shows you you got four altars out of five and kept all of those lit through it. So now there's a good reason to go, oh, I can go back in there and keep all five lit this time. Then you could have other levels that have different layouts, move the altars around so that things change. And each time you play, it's not the same thing of just doing that same figure eight pattern over and over again. I give myself some leeway. This was still really early on in me making games. So there's a lot of technical things in this one that I mostly cared about more so than the actual gameplay. Getting the light radius around so you have that little vignette around the player and all of the light sources uh getting some particle effects in there there was a lot of mechanical things that were still very difficult to me at the time so it's still a success in my opinion especially when i made it but in terms of actual game design user experience fun play this falls a bit short for me it really does even with anything with this, it should have gotten more difficult over time, or as the altars broke, it should have gotten even more difficult. Uh, I want to go check the actual code and see what I was doing and see if there's a way, at least we could tweak it just to make it more fun as is without changing it and adding in levels and all of that, because that's that's a whole big hassle to do all of that. But let's uh, let's take a look. OK, so this is the code for the original jam game. And it looks like I was actually, when the altars were less than three, I was spawning a new enemy every three seconds on top of the normal spawn that happened every 15 to 30 seconds. Oh, that's so slow. So yeah, I don't know what I was thinking there. I didn't have a good like basis of time and how difficult things should be. What if we change this to 0 0.5? How does that play? I'm really curious. Try the, the degenerate strategy and see if this changes anything with a higher spawn rate. So it disincentivizes that. Because one thing I will always say is, if you're, especially if you're doing a count up timer, it needs to get difficult fairly quickly. Okay, look how much... Oh, wow. Wow. That's, that's a lot more of these dudes coming in. Ow. Just getting bounced up actually makes it dangerous because there's guys everywhere now. So even something like this would have made the game better. Uh, the sound effects I would need to adjust because now it's getting really annoying and loud. But yeah, even something like this would have made the game better. Like look how much faster that was, right? So even trying to do the degenerate strategy, I couldn't keep it alive for more than a minute because there's just too much and I got overrun. So even something as simple as that, taking the enemies and just making them way more dangerous so that way you're not sitting there for minutes on end is more entertaining. Now it's like, oh, I can try and do better this time and try to last longer. That's something that will encourage the player to want to try again and do better. So that's way, way nicer. I like that a lot more. And I'm a little sad I didn't do that. Maybe maybe half a second is too much. Maybe I need to spawn them every one second. It's a balance thing. So I definitely think that that change makes a lot of difference. So something as simple as that. I don't, I'm not in the habit of going back and updating my Game Jam games. I never really do that unless there's a fundamental like game breaking bug in it. Like it soft locks you or something doesn't start or whatnot. That kind of thing. Yeah, I'll go back and update the Game Jam game after that just to make sure that it's playable. But typically I like to leave them as relics of 
what I thought, how I designed, and what I did at the time period that I made that game. So for the moment, I'm probably not going to make any updates to it. If people actually like this game, it, you know, maybe it's it's not worth it. It's not a good enough game to really put any kind of time or energy into. For the week that I made it, it was really fun. I learned a lot from it, but it's definitely not a fantastic game idea, I guess would be the thing I would want to say here. It's it's pretty mid. It's it's okay. It's kind of okay. It's yeah, it's bad. It's not that great, honestly. It's <sighs> <laughs> I'm trying to be nice to myself about it, but ultimately the decisions I made here were not the smartest decisions. It was a fun experience. I enjoyed it for being my second, third game jam. I feel like I did make something that was playable and looked good from a visual standpoint. I think the game looked good. I like the art. I like all the particles. I like all the, I like all of that. I think I made it look nice in terms of an actual game. That's fun to play. Meh. I feel like it could have been a lot better. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this game with me. It's been a long time. And I definitely think that to make this game better, the one thing that I would do, add levels, add a timer that counts down, and then you need to keep the altars alive during the timer. So we can increase the waves of enemies that come in. You need to keep the altars alive until the timer goes all the way down to zero. And then you get a score basically on how many altars you had in. So you score anywhere from you know zero to five, depending on how well you did, right? So if all the altars are gone, then you got a zero. If you got all the altars, if you kept them all alive, it's a five. And that will incur that would encourage players to go back in if they only got like a four. It's like, oh, I can keep all of those in. So it gives you another reason to play. And since it would only be something like 30 seconds, it doesn't, it's not prohibitively annoying to go back in and try again where you need to sit around and wait. Like examples, that first one we did where it was nine minutes or whatever. I don't want to play that again. I don't want to try to beat that score. I couldn't care less about beating that score. I hope you have enjoyed taking a look at this game with me. It was a lot of fun. I like going back and looking at my old games and kind of critiquing them. I try not to be too hard on myself, but also try to be honest about what works and what doesn't. And I feel like in this one, the things that were really working against it were just really working against it. And they hurt the fun of the game pretty heavily. So I like the style. I don't like the game. Let me know what your opinions are. What would you do to make this game more fun? Do you think that it's salvageable? Is it just... Uh, yeah, it's never something that could be made fun. I think making it into levels could be all right. What's your opinion on that? Do you think levels would actually help? Would you change it in any other way? If you like the idea and want to take any of the pieces from it, feel free. It is all yours. This is all open ideas I'm happy to share, especially with these old kind of random game jam games. If there's something in here you thought was cool and you know how to make it better, do it. I'd love to see it. And if you do do something like that, on Fridays over on twitch.tv slash Vimlark, we do community playtesting and feedback where people submit their games. We play them live on stream and give feedback. Basically what we just did here, we check it out, try to find degenerate strategies, figure out what's fun, try to talk about what could make it better, what could make it, you know, not as, you know, frustrating boring, repetitive, and all of that. And the you know community gets involved, chat gets involved, everybody kind of gives opinion. We're all there to encourage. It's not a review, it is a critique. And the difference in my opinion is a review is there to kind of tell people what to think about it. A critique is there to point out things that may not be working and then give suggestions on how to make it better because the whole point is for everybody to grow and get better as designers, not to make people feel bad and have them not make games. I want everybody to make games. I want people to enjoy. And hopefully this helps you have a little bit of motivation that even if your game isn't the best, you've made, you can make some cool things. You can still have fun with it. You can use it as a learning experience and move forward from there. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I need to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, especially my video tier and above patrons like See The Mess, iNight Gaming, Motsi, Nazar Salim, Pixelator Gadzi, and Warren Steven Rose. You're all awesome people, and I can't thank you enough. If you would like to see more critiques like this, please leave it in the comments. Uh, if you have any of the games that you've seen on my page that you would like me to check out, uh, go ahead and leave those in the comments as well, and I will put them on the list to do more of these in the future. I really enjoy these. They're a lot of fun, and going back and looking at the work you've done, I feel is very beneficial and actually helps you out in the long run. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a good one. Later.